Hey, Tervet Ulwa. Welcome to this episode of International Business from Finland podcast with me, Mark Wiltshire, where I take you behind the scenes of my solo enterprise or Toiminimi in Finnish, working with directors and business owners of Finnish companies, sharing your workload so that you can focus on growing your business. But this week, I have something a little different for you. You don't have to listen to just me talking for once. I have a guest and I'm really pleased to welcome Stephen Smith, who's the managing director of the lead generation company in the UK. Hi, Stephen. Hey, hi, Mark. So as a brief introduction to what we'll be talking about, I just want to make a quick reference to your LinkedIn profile, Stephen, which says lead generation, appointment setting, telemarketing, qualified sales leads. And I think these are things that bring some people out in a cold sweat, but they're so important to any company that's doing international business. So let's start the show and afterwards we'll, uh, we'll have a, a quick chat. Okay, so Stephen, thank you again for joining me. And where are you based, first of all? So give people a little bit of background into the lead generation company. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Well, we are we are based in our head office is Glasgow in Scotland, um, and we have a, a, a office in London and Manchester. They are both um, sort of sales offices, to so we can prospect and meet clients across the country. But the head office is sunny Glasgow. And have you worked with Nordic customers before? Because obviously, I'm based in Finland, and I'm guessing most of my listeners are are somewhere within Finland or connected to Finnish companies? Yeah, we've, we've done a lot of business over the years. We've, we've been trading seven years. Um, and we've done quite a lot of business in the, in the Nordics, um, Finland and Sweden included. So yeah, we've had good experiences. I've really enjoyed working with uh, Nordic-based businesses. Um, they've got a great way of, of doing business. Um, and we've very much enjoyed helping those companies get more of a foothold in the UK marketplace and ultimately more, more business and more sales. When people see your, uh, well, your LinkedIn profile, but some of the work that you say you do, how, how do you kind of explain it? How do you explain this phrase, lead generation? Yeah, it's a great question because lead generation means a lot to, to different, different people. Um, ultimately, we do two things. Uh, one is outbound uh, lead generation, and the other is inbound lead generation. So outbound, we do traditional telemarketing. So good old pick up the phone, get through to prospects, uh, pitch, uh, qualify, and then close to a meeting or a video conference or a webinar registration, whatever the, the client is looking for. Uh, email campaigns as well. So sending out emails to introduce the business to prospects. Um, and then LinkedIn outreach as well. We do a lot because LinkedIn these days is a great source of really good data. Um, and then on the inbound, we do digital marketing as well. So your uh, pay-per-click, uh, SEO, social content uh, and website optimization as well. Is any one of these types of contacting people more effective than, than others? Well, you know, I think, you know, even nowadays, a lot of people are talking about everything is going digital. From my side and from our business, we're still a, a big advocate of, of traditional telemarketing. It's still a great way of getting through to people. It's a very quick way. In fact, in most instances, immediate to get a feel for the market. Um, a lot of people are terrified about phoning people, but for us, that's our job, that's our skill set. We enjoy it. It is a challenge, of course, um, but if it's done in the right way, it definitely gets fantastic results. How do people in the UK react to getting a phone call? Because I know like it, it's, it's similar over here in Finland that you're often getting people phoning you, maybe trying to sell magazine subscriptions or things like that. And I don't know, there's a feeling that, you know, is the market saturated? How does it, how does it feel in the UK for that sort of type of work? Yeah, I think we found it different in the UK to the Nordics. I mean, our, our experience, because we do contact, uh, and prospect in uh, in the Nordics um, is it's a bit easier uh, to get through to decision makers in, in the Nordics. A lot of times, CEOs particularly are happy to take a call. Um, in the UK, there is more bureaucracy. It can be more difficult. You do have gatekeepers. Um, you do have the dreaded uh, automated 
uh, dialer when you phone, you know, press one or um, say what what option you want. Um, but again, if, if done in the right way, uh, it does work. Um, people are still willing to take calls. Um, not 100% of calls connect, of course. Not everybody wants to speak, of course, but you still get through to a good percentage of people. And as I said, if, if done in the right way, it's a great way to, to get business. Yeah, I have to say, we we first connected a couple of years ago because I was trying to do some of this prospecting work for a, for a client I was working with at the time. And I was finding it really frustrating. And they were finding the level of results frustrating. And so I, I reached out to, to you and, and one or two other companies to talk it through and find out um, like what, what sort of services you would offer. And... And, and, and also sort of reading between the lines as to find out what I was doing wrong. And a lot of the things that you just said were, were what I experienced in the UK. Um, the gatekeepers, the, the receptionist that won't put you through. Um, this, um, I'm sorry, we have a no names policy here. I can't tell you who is the person you should be contacting. And it was, yeah, quite, quite frustrating for me at the time. So, um, it's interesting that you, I mean, of course, you've, you've got the, the techniques now to make this a, a kind of a multi um, point of entry to try and reach out to, to different people. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, th there's definitely tactics to get around gatekeepers. The big thing is the, the data, the quality of the data that you have in order to get through to someone. So if you don't have a person to ask for, then it's very difficult to get put through to someone if there is a no, no names policy. But you know, we provide the data, and by data, I mean the list of people that we have to contact. We, we pre-agree that with the client in terms of a typical persona, you know, job title, size of business, region, uh, sector of business as well that they are looking to target. So if you know the person that you're looking to speak with in advance of calling, then that does make it a lot, a lot easier to get through because you're, ne you're then not having to try and engage too much with the gatekeeper and if there's an only name is policy then yeah it's always difficult to get to get past that but yeah you're right we've got lots of different techniques that we use um, to get through to the people that we're trying to speak with. And you also work with your clients to put that list of potential contacts together? Yeah no absolutely that's normally the big thing for us at stage one is who is that target market? Um, who is the persona of the person you're looking to speak with? Is it uh, you know, someone in finance? Is it HR? Is it IT? Um, is it marketing? Um, what level of person, uh, et cetera, what size of business? So that is always the key part that we, we start with, with any campaign. Um, and we like to be very focused on that because that is really the, the key uh, factor for success, is a good list, a good target um, persona. What have you found to be the effect on this coronavirus at the moment on this, on sales prospecting? Has it been a positive, <laughs> negative, not so much change? Yeah, I think it's a great question to be honest, Mark. Is, is we've seen a, a daily change in activity. Um, I mean, one good thing about the telemarketing side is it's a good barometer of the market because you get a feel for who's contactable, who's not. And we've seen a, a real cycle, um, very much panic at the start, people being very confused, um, and then that shift moving to their, their homes, like I am just now, I'm, I'm in the attic. Um, and then, that, then the IT people being really worked hard to make sure that people are connected at home, that they can take calls, they can make calls. Um, that's all settled down. And then we've seen a real shift in the last couple of weeks, particularly from things opening up again, things moving, people being more positive. A lot of projects put on hold are now back on. Companies are beginning to buy again. Um, so that it's definitely improved. It's been difficult, there's no, difficult, no, no doubt about it. It is getting easier. Um, and I think moving forward, um, there will always be a, a higher percentage of people working from home now. I think that's just fact. Um, and I think people are, are more willing to take calls because they want to stay connected. Um, if they're at home all day, they want to know what's happening in the outside world. So they're keen to, to know, they're, they're curious. So that's definitely helped.
that's quite interesting people are <laughs> people have been locked at home so long they're happy to speak to telemarketers when they phone up and actually i've had a, a missed call for today a couple of times today from a number that i don't recognize within finland um i'm not yet um i'm not yet ready to take that call but it's interesting as a, as a general trend if that's if that's something that you're noticing yeah absolutely it's definitely improving um we've, we've had some great success um contacting people would normally be very very difficult because again they're at home and they're keen to know and stay connected so um yeah we've seen some amazing movement on campaigns which were very very difficult before um and hopefully that that continues as well so absolutely your comment before about um con contacting uh, managing directors in the nordics compared to the uk is is valid because across the Nordics, quite often the managing director will have his mobile phone number on the company website. And in the UK, that's, that's almost impossible to find. Um, so how, are you finding that companies over there are kind of redirecting phones from the office to the individual working at home? Yeah, there will be a mixture, depending on the technology that they have. Um, they might all have it through their computer um, and they can be receive and make calls through through the platform they use, or it will be directed to their mobile um, as well. And quite often we find that gatekeepers are happy to give out the mobile um, and direct details to that person because they are at home um, as well. So from that point of view, we've, we've found that um, it's, been, it's been very opportunistic for us to get a, a higher strike rate as well. So, so yeah, it depends on the business and the size of the business as well. Um, but generally, yeah, it's been it's, it's, it's been good. And as I said, we've, we've kind of gone through that big cycle now where it's, it's, people are, are, are bedded down. It's very much kind of business as usual. Um, you know, London beginning to open up um, in terms of the UK and other cities will, will follow suit uh, in due course as well as the other countries in, in the United Kingdom. So, yeah, there's definitely things beginning to move. And for us, it's a great time to get in front of prospects and build that relationship. Um, and get the get the conversations going, uh, and obviously with geography, everybody's using video as a first point of contact with prospects. So you know you don't have to jump in a plane and spend several hours going to see somebody in the first instance. You can have that first interaction uh, using video, and that's that's definitely the way it will happen moving forward. More more stage one prospect meetings on video first, um, and that just makes it easier for everybody. Mm. So if there's a Finnish company listening to this right now and they're interested in finding customers in the UK, do you have a few, I don't know, top tips for them how they can how they can start that process or how they should approach that kind of work? Yeah, I think if you're in in Finland looking to target the UK, then stage one is always who is the type of business that you want to work with. So you will know more than anyone the, the, the benefactor of your product or service. So who is that? And you need to be quite clear uh, in terms of personas. You know, so for us, it's very much marketing managers, marketing directors, um, in large companies moving down to uh, managing directors and, and smaller businesses. That's who we want to speak with. So who is that? So we always go sector. So sector being, you know, the, the, the industry that company's in, the size of business um, based on is it turnover or headcount? Um, region as well. Is it just London and the southeast, or is it across the UK? Uh, and then job titles as well, um, and job functions is critical. Um, and then really, what what you're looking for? Is it a, a meeting? Is it a phone call? Is it a video? Is it a, a, a webinar? Um, is another thing to think about. Um, and then also the qualification of that lead. Um, for us. You know, some people just say, I want to speak to an HR director, top 1,000 business in the UK. That's fine. You know, I just want to have a conversation with them. Other clients are, are very prescriptive about the criteria in terms of budget, authority, need, and time scale. So we would always agree that qualification criteria uh, in advance. So the data, personas, the kind of meet appointment and lead that you want, um, and then the qualification of that. Uh, it's definitely what we, we would begin with when we talk with prospects and clients. And is there anything else that you'd like to add, Stephen, as we come to towards the end 
and uh, and wrap it up and I play a little bit more music for everybody is there <laughs> is there anything else that you'd like to um, you'd like to say or well, maybe how people can contact you directly or of course they can come through through me as well yeah they find, find me on LinkedIn I, I'm, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn as, as more and more people are at the moment particularly so it's a, it's a great way to connect with people so no I think you know it's a, it's a good time we've, we've definitely come through this um, and everyone has been a lot more positive the market is much more positive and for us it's a, it's a perfect time to get in front of prospects and start um, start getting new business for, for clients so yeah just uh, stay safe and, and best of luck brilliant I think I think that's been really useful for the listeners um, it's been interesting for me just to get a bit of a bit of a feel for how things are over there so Stephen Smith from the lead generation company. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks very much. Thank you. So as usual on podcasts, I'm going to ask you to rate and review this show, but I'm going to make it easier for you. Head over to ratethispodcast.com slash Wiltshire. You can leave a review and a rating for this podcast. Also, if you found it useful, interesting, entertaining, thought provoking, whatever, adjective you prefer, then feel free to buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Wilkshire. I'm trying to keep these URLs as simple as possible. Um, you can buy me a coffee because I live in Finland, the country with the highest coffee consumption per person. I'm working from home. I'm going through coffee like you wouldn't believe at the moment. So what better way to show your appreciation than throw in a few lattes in my direction. If you want to contact me, feel free to reach out at mark.wiltshire.tmi at gmail.com. Uh, your email comes directly to me. Or well, like Stephen said, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Thanks as always to Mark from Dodo Bones for the theme music. You'll find a link to that in the show notes. So one final time, thank you and goodbye to Stephen from the Lead Generation Company in the UK. And that's it for now from me. Until the next episode, goodbye.